everyone. Today we'll walk through a simple blog post in Elasticsearch Labs on how to use Amazon Bedrock with Elasticsearch and Langchain. You can replace the sample data used in this example with your data sets. We will demonstrate how to split documents into passages, index these passages into Elasticsearch and use retrieval augmented generation to pass the relevant context to Amazon Bedrock large language model to answer questions. This approach ensures comprehensive answers by leveraging relevant passages from Elasticsearch indexed documents. So let's get started. We know that it's critical for you to be able to generate relevant responses to your queries using all of your available context. And RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation enables you to do just that. So with RAG, we are able to retrieve contextual documents in conjunction with the original input from your user to generate relevant responses by grounding your large language model. So let's look at the code uh, here together. Firstly, uh, we need to just scroll down all the way here to the end of the document so that we can access this, this portion on trying it out. And you can click on this Google Colab to get started. So once you open the Google Colab, uh, we will first need to start with installing the required packages. And uh, as you can see, we need to import uh, a lot of these different modules that are required. Make sure Python is installed uh, with a minimum version of 3.8.1 uh, and uh, Bodo 3, which is part of the AWS SDK for Python is required. Uh, to use uh, Bedrock LLM, so that's important. So once that's done, we move on to the next step, which is to initialize Amazon Bedrock client. So in order to authorize the AWS service, uh, we have a couple of options, uh, but we choose to pass the AWS access key, the secret key, and AWS region to the Boto3 um, module over here. So let's go ahead and do that. So copy and paste your AWS key. And your secret. And your region, which in my case is the US West 2. I'm going to do that. Once you're done with that, the next step is to connect to Elasticsearch. So for Elastic Cloud deployment, if you don't have one, sign up for the free trial. And the link is mentioned here on the blog itself. So if you scroll down here to the middle of the blog, you'll find this section on how to basically uh, create, uh, sign up for the free trial, as well as how to get your cloud ID after you signed up for the free trial. So if you uh, click on this section here, it will help you find, uh, it'll help you navigate to your cloud ID. So you need to basically go to the home page um, uh, of your deployment. And then once you're there, you can easily uh, copy and paste your, uh, your cloud ID, which is important. So make note of that. And you also need to create an API key so for that, just click on the hamburger menu and under management, uh, you need to go to the security uh, tab and then you'll find API keys over there. So follow the prompts and generate a new API key and make note of that because we'll need it. All right, so coming back to the collab here, I'm going to use uh, my Elastic Cloud ID, which we just copied and pasted to the prompt. That's done. Now we need the API key, which is right here. And that's done. That's initialized. So as you can see in this 
piece, uh, we are using the Elastic Surge Store to connect to our Elastic Cloud deployment. And this would help to create an index data easily in this index called the Workplace Index, which you see over here. And in Elastic Search Store instance, we will set the embedding to Bedrock Embeddings using the Bedrock Client, which we initialized in the last step. So moving on to the next step, we will now be downloading uh, the data set. So let's download the sample data set and deserialize the document into a Python object called Workplace Docs. So if you take a closer look over here, quickly exploring the data set uh, that we'll be using today, it looks like we have some HR policy data set with a bunch of metadata fields here, uh, like name, URL, created on, updated at, category, and role permissions um, as metadata. So feel free to replace uh, this with your own data set. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. Now we come to the section where we split these documents into passages. Next, we'll chunk all of these documents right in the workplace uh, docs that we created into passages using a simple splitter and specify the chunk size and overlap. Here we're using a simple splitter but Langchain does offer more advanced splitters to reduce the chance of context being lost. So the first step is to import the required modules. And this line over here basically imports the recursive character text splitter class, right, uh, from the Langchain text splitter module. And this class is used for splitting text into smaller chunks while preserving the meaning and structure of the text. Initializing lists is then done over here using uh, the, the two empty lists metadata, which uh, will basically be used to hold metadata, like we saw names, role permissions for each document. And the content list will be used to uh, hold the text content uh, of, uh, of, the, of the text that we are storing for each document. Next, we loop through, uh, through the doc, through the workplace docs that we created. So a for loop is used to iterate over each document in workplace docs, which we deserialized from JSON earlier. And for each doc or document here, the content of the document, doc uh, content, this line here, is appended to the content list, which we created. And a dictionary containing metadata, which is name, summary, role permissions for the document is created and appended to the metadata list, which we created. Then we create a text splitter. Uh, to create chunks of text with specific size and overlap parameters. This creates an instance of recursive character text splitter using the method uh, called from tick token encoder, which is here. The chunk size of 512 is specified here with an overlap of 256. So the chunk size basically uh, specifies the maximum number of characters uh, in each chunk and the Chunk overlap specifies uh, the number of characters that should overlap between consecutive chunks to help maintain the context. And next we'll uh, use this created text splitter to split the text into chunks and associate each chunk with its respective metadata, storing the resulting chunks in this docs variable. So in short, in this step of chunking, which I will now run from here, yeah, so in this step, we basically, uh, the step of chunking the documents into smaller passages, 
Uh, this will help us to improve the retrieval specificity by ensuring that we can provide multiple passages within the context window of the final question answering LLM prompt. So this is now done. Next, the data will be indexed into Elasticsearch. So let me go ahead and run this. So this will basically index the documents, uh, the data into Elasticsearch using Elastic's store from documents, which you can see over here. And we will pass the docs we created along with the Elastic Cloud ID, the API key, which you copied earlier, and the index name, Workplace Index, and the Bedrock embedding, which we created earlier. And this should index our documents into Elasticsearch in this index called Workplace Index. So now that that step has executed, we can actually head over to Elasticsearch to see our index, which was created. This is the index, and we can see if the documents were indexed. And we can see, yes, they were indexed. Perfect. And we can also see all of the vector information that was stored here in the index. Perfect. Now let's get back to initializing the Bedrock LLM, which is the next step. So in this step, what we're basically doing is to initialize the Amazon Bedrock LLM. And in the Bedrock instance, we will pass the Bedrock client, which uh, we created earlier uh, in step two, and the specific model ID. Now you can choose any of the available base models on Amazon Bedrock. I'll go ahead and choose the Amazon Titan model. And we have executed that step. All right, so finally we reach uh, the step where we, uh, we come to the step of asking a question. So now that we have the passages stored in Elasticsearch and the LLM is initialized, we can now ask a question. The as retriever method converts the vector store into a retriever object. The retriever's job is to find documents from Elastic Vector Store that are relevant to your query. This retriever component fetches the relevant documents from Elasticsearch Vector Store. We set up the retriever QA in this next step. And this class is basically used for combining the strengths of the large language model and a retriever. And it answers questions by retrieving and processing the relevant documents. This from LLM method that we see here basically initializes this retriever QA system using this um, LLM, which we uh, created earlier, and we passed this on, a retriever from step one uh, that we created here. And it also sets the, uh, the return source documents to true. So this ensures that the documents used to generate the answers are returned as well. This is useful for understanding the context and verifying that answer. Next, we will uh, list all of our questions and we will choose to answer question one. This particular line over here uh, basically, it, uh, this code calls the Retriever QA system with the selected question we chose. And the system uses the Retriever to find the relevant documents and the, uh, and the LLM to formulate a response. Finally, this answer stores the resulting answer and any other relevant information, including source documents. Next, you print the actual answer returned by QA system and sources in blue text. For uh, doc in ans, the source documents that you can see here, this loop iterates through each document that was used as a source to generate the answer. 
and the print, uh, the name and uh, the content, uh, that, that piece is done over here. Um, and uh, as you can see, all of that uh, has been run here already by me. So I'll just go ahead and rerun this anyway. And you can see that instantly uh, this question that, that was asked on what is our work from home policy was answered. And all the sources listed in blue over here, uh, the header, and you can see all the, all the relevant sources as well was captured and returned back to us. So this code was basically designed to retrieve and answer a specific question from the question list that we, um, that we had over here using a combination of elastic vector store, a retriever, and an LLM. So to repeat, the retriever passes the retrieved documents or context along with the user questions to the bedrock uh, LLM. And the LLM generates and sends back the responses. The retrieved answer and the source documents are then printed out for easy reference. And you saw the example output that we produced along with the sources. So that's it. It's as simple as that. Try this out with your own data sets and see how it performs. The links to Elasticsearch and how to get the cloud ID and API keys and this Google Colab are all listed here in this trying out section here. And in summary, today we walked through how to create uh, the retrieval augmented generation using Elasticsearch, Bedrock, and Langchain. You can explore using ELSER or learned Elastic Sparse Encoder model, which is an out of domain model not requiring fine tuning on your data. So that makes it very adaptable for a variety of use cases out of the box, right? So ELSER will embed the text and store the resulting tokens in Elasticsearch index, and it enables you to perform semantic search, that is search based on contextual meaning rather than exact keyword matches using uh, text expansions. So that produces highly relevant responses. Go ahead and try that. And also, depending on your use cases, you may choose to use a hybrid search strategy, right? Something that combines vector, keyword, and semantic search uh, techniques to get even better results. So I'd encourage you to check out more of that and hybrid search and ELSER on Elasticsearch Labs. Hope you enjoyed this simple blog today. Stay tuned and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.